earthquake had ever occurred at, at Qumran. So in our view, the earthquake hypothesis was another one you hear talked about all of the time, but which is a priori wrong. And, and in fact, influenced a lot of the dating and the considerations of what Qumran was and when it began and when it, when it, when it, when it was flourishing. It is based on misconceptions about the orientation of what the Dead Sea Scroll Covenanters was all, was all about. And it is finally the weakest point in the Essene theory. I think, let me, there was one point I missed if I could, just let me think about it now. Cut it and splice or do what you want. You don't want to keep it, throw it away. Another, I don't mean to overdo the weaknesses of this theory, but another thing that no one ever thought about in terms of the so-called earthquake hypothesis, just because they saw a notice in Josephus that there was an earthquake in 31 BC, uh, and then said, oh, well, this is what caused this particular crack here along this stairway with no indication anywhere else. Uh, uh, if, in fact, it was an earthquake that caused this, which we, which we through the ground scan, have subsequently proved that it wasn't, but even if it wasn't, e e even if it was, well, that earthquake could have occurred in uh, 100 AD, 500 AD, 1000 AD, 1500 AD. We don't know when such an earthquake might have caused this kind of damage. That's the kind of childish, superficial, I call it dumbbell archaeology, the kind of really unsophisticated uh, historical thinking and archaeological uh, theorizing that we've had uh, surrounding uh, the whole subject of the Dead Sea Scrolls, mostly put in place by people who had an agenda or a previous uh, connection, people who were under authority of some kind. On the Christian side, people who were under authority of various churches and religious movement. On the Jewish side, people who were uh, totally focused on the subject of rabbinic Judaism, not understanding that this group was totally opposed to rabbinic Judaism too. And so all of the groups that were doing the theorizing and still doing the theorizing relating to Dead Sea Scrolls uh, uh, studies come from uh, mindsets and authorities, most of them feeling they're under that authority. For instance, Millick says, the righteous teacher at Qumran would be just like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but he's no, no, there's no developed doctrine of, uh, uh, of the supernatural Christ. Well, 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 that shows that he's preconceived, expecting there to be a picture of Jesus like in, in the Gospels. His mindset is under authority. So, uh, since the archaeology was done by those, uh, since the theorizing was done by those people, they just don't do the detailed scientific consideration that we expect in most other subjects. The Dead Sea Scrolls is an extremely odd subject, uh, peopled by people with extremely deep uh, uh, religious affiliations and mindsets, and uh, the work they've done, to some extent, is vitiated because of that. That was a very good point. Very good. Didn't say it well, but maybe you'll get it out of me better some other time. It's hard to, hard to get your brain around it, you know. Okay. Uh, this relates to the actual coin data beyond when the earthquake was, the second stage of habitation, as most people put it, that led up to a crescendo in 68 AD at the time of the uprising against Rome. Everyone knows the uprising against Rome. We have uh, Josephus, the Jewish historian of the first century, to document it occurred between 66 and 70 AD. 68 to 70 really was what might call its Jacobin phase when it went into its ex extreme phase when all the revolutionaries killed all the high priests and burned their palaces and took over in a kind of semi-democratic zealot phase. Uh, we call, I call it the Jacobin phase because I think that's the Jamesian phase anyway. I think these people in the Psalm 37 pressure had shown that these people take vengeance for the death of, uh, of, of the righteous teacher on the priest class. And so the Jews are not united in any way at all. But the um, um, consensus um, uh, normative network of scroll scholars, we call it the consensus network, the Essene theory people, like to think that Qumran was, inhabit, was, was abandoned in 68 before the temple fell. And they use coin data to prove that, saying that 68 is the last coin uh, that they have found in this area that they can mark. 
Well, 68 was the beginning of the time Jerusalem would have been surrounded. So very few coins would have been getting out of, of uh, Jerusalem anyway with a mint date later than that. But finding a coin at a certain place uh, is only a terminus a quo. It only tells you from what point the coin could have been dropped. In other words, the coin couldn't have been dropped any earlier than 68. It doesn't say that it was picked up in 68. It doesn't say it was actually dropped in 68. That's just the earliest date. Could have been 70. In other areas now, we found down here at Enfeshka, an agricultural area connected to this settlement, coins from 69. Up by this um, uh, lookout uh, that's about four kilometers down, down, down the road that's certainly connected to this location, we found coins from 69 and 70. So, in fact, uh, we don't even yet have all of DeVos coins. So just on the basis of coin data, we can't say that Qumran fell in 68. Why is it so important to the theorists? Ah, because the Essene theorists say, aha, we've got you. One of the documents in the scrolls, the Habakkuk commentary, refers to the fall of the temple. Therefore, it couldn't have been the fall of the temple in 70 AD. It must have been the fall of the temple in an earlier time. 37 BC when Herod stormed the temple, 63 BC when Pompey stormed the temple, uh, uh, stormed the temple, or even in the Judas Maccabee period. But this again is getting very complex. But the point is, it's a non sequitur once again. Because even if it was 68, people like Josephus knew that the temple was uh, doomed. But then once again, even if they abandoned the buildings here in 68, it doesn't mean, mean that they abandoned the site. They were living in caves and lean-tos. Uh, the, the earthquakes, the burned buildings would have had no, would have had no uh, effect on their being in this site and their presence here. In fact, the only real terminus a quo, terminus to which, that you can actually speak of in these, uh, uh, ter uh, terminus ad quem, I mean, that you can actually speak, to, speak about is the Bar Kokhba uh, 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 uprising. We have Bar Kokhba coins from 132 to 136 on this site. Uh, the, only th the only date that you can really be sure that the scrolls were deposited in the, in the cave. Abandonment of the buildings here does not mean abandonment of the total area. Destruction of the buildings here, even if it was 68, does not mean abandonment of the total area. The only time the total area was finally abandoned was 136 A AD. These scrolls could have been put into the caves in 68, in 69, in 70, any time up to when Masada fell in, in uh, 73, in fact, any time up to um, 136. Finally, the reference to the fall of the temple is a very important one. It's in the Habakkuk commentary. We'll talk about it. And in the Habakkuk commentary, it says that the Romans and the